Joseph, we are really grateful you're here with us today. And uh, we don't have so much time, so if you don't mind, we're going to jump into uh, questions. But in general, we are really excited to get your take on um, what you think of machine consciousness, how your work uh, relates to it. And uh, to start us on our first question, we wanted to know what for you are the most important concepts uh, from cybernetics and classic AI research that are currently being neglected and could help us uh, understand consciousness? Ah, there are, is um, indeed a concept which uh, I must confess has not been part of uh, cybernetics, has not been part of uh, good old fashioned AI and is totally absent of from today's uh, deep learning uh, concentrated AI. And that is the neural or rather synaptic dynamic self-interaction uh, of the brain, which creates um, a reduction of the search space uh, of the brain. You know, in all the consciousness theories that we know, uh, information integration theory, global workspace, and my own coherence definition of consciousness of 97, None of you have ever ever read. Uh, they speak <laughs> of a reduction of the um, face space of the brain, which is characteristic of consciousness. But none of these theories, including my own, um, speak about the nature of that um, of those uh, patterns that uh, develop in the brain. Uh, in actual fact, there are there is a universe of forms, which is um, uh, which tunes the brain to the natural environment, so that networks uh, act as a representation of content. Um, it is not neurons uh, as is in present theory. It's actually nets that um, uh, represent content. So, uh, enabling my mind, for instance, uh, to act as an analog twin to the reality out there. Now, the um, uh, effect of this self-interaction is uh, a creation of self-consistent network states. Um, one can see this as a uh, predictive coding writ large, so that every active neuron has a number of converging uh, excitatory inputs to it, each one of which predicts the others. This is a very non-trivial uh, non state. So a very important uh, issue is how high order patterns are represented. Um, in, in, the, in the present AI, high order patterns are represented by individual neurons. Uh, whereas in reality, high order patterns in our brain are represented by nets, by large numbers of neurons that, uh, that stabilize each other. And these patterns uh, undergo regular transformations under perspective, for instance, or different uh, instances of the same type of object share a common structure, like the body schema in, in uh, uh, animals. And this is the basis for very efficient learning. Um, you know, whereas in, in uh, deep learning, you have to show a system 100,000 pictures of an elephant. Um, our, our kids uh, only need to see one and, and uh, know them all. And this is, of course, possible only because the different uh, representations of elephants, they share a structure and can be uh, linked up with each other uh, on that basis. Uh, all basis for intelligence, for problem solving, perception, creativity is of course constrained search. And if you want to, uh, to, to, to create structure by search, you are facing the bias variance dilemma, as you all know. If your search space is too large, you will never find the goodies. 
and if your bias is too uh, is is uh, narrow but doesn't fit your application domain you are out of luck you will never find the solution so uh, on on that basis uh, it is probably a very bad idea to search for artificial general intelligence because there is the no free lunch theorem as you all know which says um, each uh, optimal system is only tuned to one kind of environment. So, uh, in, in answer to your question, I think there is an elephant in the room, which is the self-interaction of the, of the uh, nervous system in our brain, which produces a, um, a universe of structured patterns which uh, are responsible for the creation of consciousness. How do you think it would be possible to test this perspective? What would an experiment look like? Well, of course, one would have to um, transform all of what we now call um, um, artificial intelligence. But um, it is probably a very good step in that direction by creating a little demo system. I once uh, was up to actually uh, founding a company to create it, which um, was, I, I, uh, which didn't work, not because I didn't get the money, but because I couldn't uh, uh, um, convince a group of young people to work with me. Uh, now, a little demo system would be one where you have a camera, which you um, uh, let, uh, the system look at a, a moving object and demonstrate that the system can build a 3D model of that object on the spot within seconds. That's what kids do, of course, when they, uh, once they have grown to the age of three, they have this ability by inspecting an object to create a model which allows them to uh, fit that model to um, to all objects, uh, to, to all images of that object, or um, to um, uh, to other uh, instances of that object, it's a, a very modest little demonstration. But I think it will show a the power of um, this kind of self-organization in the brain. If you could come up with a single experiment that uh, you would want to realize that you think is the most important, most interesting thing that uh, could be done in this space. What would this look like? What would be um, the effort that would need to go into it? What would be the scope of it? And what would be the success metric? How would you know that you succeeded? You know, when in math class at, at school, uh, there is one pupil who takes uh, 50, 50 examples before um, he or she gets it. And there's another pupil who, who gets it with one example. You would call the first very stupid and the second very intelligent. Uh, and I think our, our present AI uh, technology is stupid in that sense because it needs so much um, demonstration material. So I think a, um, a, a, a test, a demonstration that you are asking for would be the to, to show the ability for a system to learn from very few examples. And uh, um, at, at first, uh, by, by erecting a model of, of individual objects, which is a very modest task, but then, of course, in uh, digesting whole environments, uh, creating representations of scenes as animals do when they are born. They, um, most animals, like a new that is born into the step, can uh, walk within, can follow the mother within minutes and have a grasp of the, uh, of the environment. So I think this kind of demonstration of um, built up of representation of the environment by um, perception would, in my view at least, be a very in, in, uh, convincing step in the direction of creating consciousness. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Christophe. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Uh, I know it's very late where you are, so we are we are really grateful <laughs> yes. that you still stuck yes, along to be with, her, with us here. <laughs> we wish I, you... I'm very sorry I cannot be with you. Oh. I, I see this yeah, too. very interesting group of people in this room. Yes, it is an amazing uh, room full of amazing people. It's, I'm so happy. <laughs> it's, it's a very moving event for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, so glad you can't be here in spirit and I regret you cannot be here in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> but thank, thank you, you so for much. Thank you for participate just the same. Yeah, yes. we hope to see you another time in person, but mm -hmm. in the meantime, have a good night. <laughs> and have a good <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> a very productive afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christoph. Bye.